today we're trying this delicious place that I don't know how to say the name of, Tasakawa, Tasa, Tasaoka, T-S-A-O-C-A-A. -A. I'll put it here. <laughs> I'll try it too, I don't know. So it took forever, but this is how you know it's gonna be good. So we got this waffle. We got this potato dog. <laughs> and then brown sugar milk black tea with boba. I didn't want black tea, so this was wrong. But we're just gonna roll with it. She didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I was saying. I didn't know what I wanted. That menu is so extensive and overwhelming. I was like, why doesn't mine look like the girl that just ordered the same thing that I did? Because it's tea, y'all. But you know what? We're lactose in this bitch, so it's fine. I got this cute little cheat keychain from here, but I got this guy the last time with Jonathan. I don't even know what his name is. And then I got this little boba guy right here. Look at, so adorable. It's Friday, and I think TGIF, like whoever came up, Whoever came up with that, I just went everywhere. Well, good thing they did extra boba, so. It's not bad, it's just not milky. It's just all water. It tastes like water brown tea <laughs> with boba. Whatever, it's the healthier choice. T S A O weird thing C A A. What's weird to me is that they're all Asian in the back, but then they have these two cute little white girls at the front that look like these anime characters, and I'm like, what the hell kind of world am I in? So this is their pink velvet. I have no idea what the pink velvet actually is, but this one took forever. The corn dog was ready before the waffle. Okay, she was worth it. Mm-hmm. They have bubble tea, fried chicken, egg waffle, which we're eating right now. But the fried chicken I wanted to try but they only had boneless. Okay, potato dog. Sweet chili, whole mozzarella. <gasps> Look at this. Oh yeah, it just comes with sweet chili. I do like sweet chili with the corn dog. Oh my god. You guys don't even understand how good that tastes. I was watching my girl Veronica Wing eat this shit. And it tastes just like she made it look. I promise you. Get you one of these. It's... If this isn't a metaphor for life, I don't know what is. I didn't expect a cheese pull in the beginning. I got the one of the best cheese pulls. I expected the second time, and it didn't happen. Mm. 
have no expectations in life. Honestly, I had zero expectations with Jonathan and that's how we got here. Because I really didn't expect us to be together, let alone be married. You guys, there is a beauty salon right in front of me. And I used to watch this soap opera called Passions. And I'm pretty sure that this photo of this guy is from like the 90s because it's the same guy from Passions and he looks the exact same age. Like, he's fine. He got the abs, but like, that's not recent and you didn't do that here. I come from a weird time, you guys. Comment below if you used to watch Passions, okay? I would run home from school for that shit because it started at 3 or like... I was like right on the nose of when I got home. I knew the theme song. I used to run home for Arthur and Zoom. And I was always jealous of the kids that knew like the Zoom language. They're like, oh yeah, it's really easy. You just take a syllable of this and then mix it up. And then yeah, everybody knows Abba Tabi Wubby language. Like what the fuck are you talking about? Come on in Zoom. Come on in Zoom. People are just like, <laughs> there's this guy that's staring at me. There's like a construction worker staring at me on his lunch. Hello. You know why I care what people think in that sense? It's because I'm such a judgmental bitch that if I saw myself, I'd be like, but you have to remind yourself, it's none of your business and it's none of their business. So let them. I'm not unique I'm not the only person who doesn't have many friends or has very little friends because everybody's becoming woke being like wow a lot of people suck a lot of people are selfish Jonathan and I went to dinner like months and months ago maybe a year ago now to this restaurant and this girl was with this guy you could tell they were just friends. I, I forgot how, but she was so loud. And all you could hear was, I, 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 me, me, me. I, 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 me, me, me. And I was like, damn, all this bitch is doing is talking about herself. She never asked him once about himself. I think growing up, at least for me, when I was a teenager, it felt like your friends cared about your problems because you shared your problems. You shared your life. It felt like people were listening. At least, that's what I thought. And then as I got older, I just realized that no one's actually, no one cares about your problems because everyone's going through their own. I'm not saying everyone generalizing. I had this entire revelation that I believe the real ones in life I can say the chosen ever, but the real ones, the ones that want more than surface level conversations, the ones that want more than just get drunk and do drugs together, whatever, are the ones that have minimal friends. And the people who are just all surface level are the ones that have the most friends. Because they just have a whole roster of these acquaintances. Like, I don't know very many people that have like loads and loads of friends that they have these deep, deep connections with. I'll give you an example. Jonathan and I grew up with these people, and we actually liked them a lot. There's a group, Annie, Brianne, 
it was mostly Annie and Brienne, who I fucking love Annie and Brienne. They're just special. I'm like, they're still the Annie and Brienne show. They're like Tina Fey and the other chick. Amy Poehler, whatever. That's Annie and Brienne. And they have like the little squad. But they're still friends with those people. They're the, I don't know if they're the only people they hang out with, but if you're on Facebook and friends with them, like they still kick it. Annie's been with the same guy since grammar school and has kids with him and he's the football coach. Like, and I don't know how deep their friendship goes. I'm sure it's really deep. But they don't have a lot of friends of that caliber. They only have their one little tight niche, their little clique. I have commitment issues. I could never say that committed. Me personally, I could never say that committed to somebody for so long. I'd be like, okay, I gotta go live my life now. I can't see you all the time. I can't talk to you every day. Do I wish I had that? Yeah, like right now in Tosca, this group of Asian kids just went in there and they're like, I don't know what their relationships are. They look like one of them could be their little brother that they're like having tag along and they just have this camaraderie and this body language and here I am alone in my car talking to you. <laughs> I miss those days. We used to kick it at um, the hip and if you know what the hip is, like they remodeled it now, but you used to walk in that bitch for five minutes and you'd seen the whole damn mall and you'd run into people from school and you'd sit in the food court and it was all surface level. But I love, I love watching people, like, people watching like this because I love, like, reading body language and, like, seeing people without masks and, like, laughing and being in close coordinates. Like, I felt so apocalyptic when lockdown happened, like, right before lockdown. That was a traumatic time for us all. I don't even, you know what? I was going to say, I don't even like to think about that time. This is good, but just it's like waffle. It doesn't really have like any filling in it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like part, the pink thing. It's like, it's not even filling. It's just waffle that's pink. So it's just an egg waffle. It doesn't have any flavoring. This would have been better with milk tea. That's why she, I said milk tea, bitch. That's why she fucking said that. I think I said bubble tea. I don't know, bitch. But they have, like, so much. But, yeah. For me, personally, yeah, I'm a hothead. Yeah, I'm emotionally reactive. So, when some shit goes left, and I say, hey, friend, I have a problem with that. Like, okay. Uh, I also realized recently in therapy that I am a big part of the reason why I don't have relationships with people. Whether it's my family, my friends, and it's because there is this side to me, I can't speak for us all, where it's like part monster, you know, and you have to keep the monster at bay. And then that monster comes out and then sometimes I get scared that people see the real me, but it's not the real me. It's a part of me that is hurt and traumatized from things that I've gone throughout my life that I need to learn to let go of and move on from. I don't know where like that hurt and anger comes from that makes me push people away essentially. I don't know how to have these like close relationships even with my own family. I think we have some type of dissociative disorder because my uncle and even my oldest brother, not so much now, but back in the day, like, we just disassociate where we're like, okay, we love you, but we can't be around you for our own sake and yours. Like, our own sakes and your sake because you piss me off. I'm going to react to you. I don't want to be around you because I'm not feeling good. Like, relationships are just so complicated. And a lot of people just don't stick with complicated. And... 
I don't know. It just makes me, it has made me feel like I haven't been worth it in the past. I'm working on that now where it's like, okay, well, I'm not perfect, but if you really cared about me, if you really loved me, you would stay. I think my mom does that too. Man. I'm having a lot of revelations lately. I'm going to end this on a funny note. I went to Catholic school my whole life, y'all. I have a whole thing about nuns. Like, we just don't get along. But I got into it with a few nuns at my, in my high school. One of them who, it was her birthday when I told her off. And I didn't even know that I went to detention for. I think she was racist as fuck. So I just don't really like them too much. And there's this one that always comes in. She always comes in and I just don't like hook her up to the machines because I basically have to go in her ass and she wears these like not tight shorts. They're like really baggy and like they look loose, but they're really tight on the side. So she won't take off her garments and I can't really like go in the hole. Like that's the thing is like if you're doing physical therapy, please just like wear looser clothes. I can't get in places and it's just awkward so she told me that like last week um I did it really well when I wasn't thinking like I it was the first time I had ever done it and I did it perfect as far as the placements of um they're called electrodes so these little pads that sound like electric shock waves for to relieve pain so I put them perfectly fine and I don't know if I got too much in my head but the little next couple times she was like oh my god it's burning which I don't know how because the only thing is is like if it's on a bone or something but that was the whole thing is like I was burning the nun y'all I was burning the nun I was like please don't let me hook her up like anybody else who's here please hook this lady up like I don't want to burn the nun I'm gonna go to hell I, like and then she's like oh you got in there real good last time I was like don't worry girl like I'm gonna go in your I'm, I'm gonna go find your spots I'm sorry, but like I can't feel where her bones are because she's not fat, but like she's jello-y. She's like jello. And oh my god, it's awful, y'all. Like I really was just thinking while I was connecting everything, like, I hate this, I hate this, I hate this. Like <laughs> touching people is just so weird. Oh. Alright, y'all. Thank you so much. I appreciate y'all so much. Peace out.